2024 was an exciting year of AI announcement after AI announcement, and for those in the Microsoft ecosystem, the degree of clarity we have around the overall direction of the Copilot product line as we enter 2025 is far greater than just a year ago. However, even with a roadmap of exciting new features laid out for some products, there is the potential to pause to reflect on the what-ifs, the things that Microsoft might do that in my view would radically improve this already fantastic set of products. As with any such list, these are hypotheticals based on best guesses, but with no non-public information otherwise. Here is my list of top 5 predictions for Copilot in 2025. But first a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm a consultant who specialises in helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. And as always, if this video is useful to you, please give it a like to help it get in front of more interested people. And if you want to see more, please do subscribe. In the last couple of months of 2024, the topic of metered access to Copilot features has come up more and more. First, metered pay-as-you-go access has been added to Copilot Studio custom agents through extension of the existing pay-as-you-go Power Platform offerings. At just a penny a message, this access is priced fairly compared to buying message packs at $200 for 25,000 messages. However, we have also learned through the announcement of promotional access to SharePoint agents for organisations with 50 or more paid Microsoft 365 Copilot seats starting in January that metered access will be made available to SharePoint agents too. And lastly, connected with the announcement that free Microsoft Copilot users will be getting access to basic agents too, we have learned that the plan is to allow them to use agents grounded in Microsoft 365 data with metered access as well. However, with this vast extension of pay-as-you-go AI into Microsoft 365, one level of access still stands distinct. Microsoft 365 Copilot, while now available to be billed monthly, still requires a minimum 12-month term and at $30 per month is potentially very expensive for those who are making light use of it. Will we see metered pay-as-you-go access to core Microsoft 365 Copilot functionality by the end of 2025? I think so as I think, coupled with Microsoft's new usage reporting tools, for many users, this will demonstrate a good reason to invest in long-term per-user licensing of these AI features. As a means to expand the user base, pay-as-you-go, or at least far more flexible Microsoft Copilot licensing, may be an essential and logical change for Microsoft to make. Last year, I predicted less reliance on OpenAI by Microsoft, and on many fronts, this has panned out, with more focus on internally built models like Fire 4, no mention of OpenAI in the model shipping with Copilot Plus PCs, and even a multi-model selector in GitHub Copilot giving us access to use Claude there. However, OpenAI's models seem to have remained steadfastly locked in step with Microsoft 365 Copilot and the associated range of products. However, I think in 2025 this is likely to change, and the model selection capability we see in GitHub Copilot may well be a first foray into something we'll see in Microsoft 365 Copilot too. This will give Microsoft a product equivalent to what Amazon is doing with Q, or what is likely to happen with Apple Intelligence in the future, as it seems unlikely that Apple will remain locked into OpenAI's models being the only external AI source. Microsoft already has a massive selection of different models available in Azure AI Foundry, many of which on the surface would appear capable of doing much of what GPT-4 or 4.0 are doing under the hood with Copilot. After all, I have argued here before that the special source Microsoft is selling with Copilot isn't really the AI model, but the sophisticated orchestration layer that includes RAG access to Microsoft 365, compliance and safety. It seems logical that Microsoft could tailor its Copilot system prompts in that orchestration engine to work for a variety of enterprise selected or even user selected models. For Microsoft, this capability would provide insulation from any future OpenAI based controversy, whether it be firing the CEO or being sued over training data, or myriad other potential vulnerabilities each of the big AI firms theoretically could have. 
For customers, the opportunity to make a selection potentially allows you to select models based more on your particular needs or moral positions on AI, and having an active input allows for flexibility should any issues arise. But first, as more businesses embrace AI or are impacted by AI through their employees using their own tools, finding ways to bring AI users up to speed on its risks and how to mitigate them is essential. My new on-demand course, Responsible AI for Business Users, gives you an overview of AI safety and responsible use across seven modules and easily digestible bite-sized videos of 10 minutes or less. You will learn why generative AI makes mistakes, how to identify those errors, and how to ensure your proprietary data or private information stays safe when using AI. You don't want to be the next cautionary tale for what can go wrong with AI and risk the reputational damage, business challenges, or even financial impact that can result. Ensure you and your team are equipped with the knowledge that can help you stay safe and use AI responsibly. Check out the link down below to find out more about Responsible AI for Business Users. My underwhelm on the features rolled out with Copilot Plus PCs has been documented through several videos on this channel. However, it's very early days and I fully expect Microsoft to stay committed to this initiative through 2025, bringing us features that might represent a Copilot Plus PC Plus versus what is available today. First, we are already seeing the Copilot Plus PC designation come to more hardware with mobile chips from Intel and AMD that meet the requirements of the standard rather than just relying on ARM-based Snapdragon chips. However, we still need more diversification, particularly in options for power users where a thin and light laptop generally doesn't meet the need. This is made harder by specific hardware security requirements that potentially make the Copilot Plus PC standard less optimal for normal desktop workstation configurations than laptops where all the hardware can be built in together from the start. It's my guess that at some point options will be created for some Copilot Plus PC features to come to hardware with GPUs that can meet the TOPS requirement for these systems. This is made harder by hardware security requirements. But just as TPM requirements can be watered down, maybe these can too. The likelihood is those who rely on powerful fixed workstations to do their job won't be tempted by a Snapdragon-based Copilot Plus PC anytime soon. Second, undoubtedly the most useful, but also most controversial feature of the Copilot Plus standard is recall. This capability to take screenshots of everything you do, albeit with some restrictions, and then help you recall that information later, is almost a perfect use case for AI. Almost perfect, because in being locked to a single system, the impact of this data is slightly neutered. Right now, if you want to recall something after a hardware failure, you're out of luck. But there's lots of other situations where this could be problematic too. What do I guess we might see in this space? I would be very surprised if by the end of 2025 we don't see some version of recall for business, where this feature can be turned on by corporate administrators, the data gets stored to a cloud-based profile that roams with you from device to device, and that the understanding of your work history integrates into the semantic index of your graph data that powers Microsoft 365 Copilot. Recall as it stands might be useful, but a recall integrated with all your work information is where the real power of this solution lies and would be the killer AI feature to entirely differentiate Copilot's capabilities from the competition. I suspect that all Microsoft is waiting for is a greater perception of trust in AI to pull that trigger. Anyone who watches my videos here will know how excited I am about Copilot agents and what they mean for Copilot. The Copilot extensibility model is, in my opinion, the most compelling capability Microsoft's AI lineup has to make it the product of choice for businesses. I expect the capabilities of agents will radically expand in 2025. First, we know that BizChat will become a more solid foundation for all agent experiences, with it already shown that both SharePoint agents and custom agents from Copilot Studio will start turning up there. However, in apps, 
We also know that eventually options will become available for agents to interact directly with the content you're working on. Beyond this, we have seen agents like the one in Planner or the meeting assistant in Teams that can be more participatory and engaged with our activities. We could expect that more experiences like this will be coming. The combination of agents, access to them in different usage paradigms and autonomous capabilities is a powerful one. Imagine drafting some thoughts in Word, giving an agent the task of refining the work and adding references, and coming back to the document a little later to see track changes showing the edits the AI has made, just as you would from another user. There are lots of tasks where the real-time capabilities of Copilot are paramount, but by building out an AI user class of agents that are there working proactively in the background to support processes and tasks, the power of AI enablement will expand. These types of capabilities are definitely coming in general terms to the AI space. I hope that 2025 will be when we start to see them for Copilot users. Last, I'm hoping 2025 will be the year when we can stop putting an asterisk next to the claim that Microsoft 365 Copilot sees everything you do in your user and organization graph. Sure, lots of the data is accessible, your Word documents, your PowerPoint slide decks, emails, meeting transcripts, but there's still a surprising amount that isn't. Data in Microsoft Lists, SharePoint metadata, referencing specific pages in OneNote, or even data like forms responses. There's a significant list of places where even if Copilot is available, it doesn't have full visibility. In my mind, this lack of integration is an unhelpful tax on those organizations that prior to Copilot had been most committed to embracing modern work in Microsoft 365. Copilot's index actually, to some extent at least, works best for those organizations that use Microsoft 365 like a cloud-based old-fashioned file share, and least well for those who have spent serious time committing to the new data organization and app to data alignment paradigms modern features offer. Already there is movement on this. OneNote integration recently improved, and delegated mailboxes, I think I recall, will be coming to Copilot too. But there is more work to be done. I would love to just be able to say that Microsoft 365 Copilot works with all the data you have access to in Microsoft 365. No ifs, buts, caveats, or special setup required. I'd love to know what your predictions for Copilot in 2025 are, and what you think of mine. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.